can't believe that it's now springtime here in Sydney. It is just crazy how quickly this year seems to be flying by. I guess that's just life with a baby. Uh, so today I want to run through the items that I wore the most throughout winter. You'll know if you've been following for a while, I film these every single season. And one thing I reflected on after kind of noting down what I'd been wearing the most based on my uh, my wardrobe wear count Excel sheet was that a lot of these pieces are very similar to what I was wearing in autumn. So I would love to know whether you would prefer if I did these once every six months, so one covering autumn, winter and spring, summer, or if you like the format that I'm doing currently, which is at the end of every season. With that said, I'm going to dive into it and start with knitwear. And actually, I'm kind of going to be talking through an additional knitwear piece because there were two sweaters that I wore loads. The first one I wore 30 times, uh, so basically once every third day, <laughs> and it is from And of the Stories, and I actually just pulled this out of the laundry hamper because I want to pop it in the wash. It is a black oversized cardigan. This was part of my 30 by 30 capsule wardrobe, which I'm going to leave a link down to all of the outfits that I wore during that month in the description box if you would like to go check it out. I'm actually planning on doing a 30 day capsule wardrobe once a season just because I feel like it's a really great way for me to one not have to think about what I'm wearing to help me kind of identify style uniforms a little bit better and third also just make the most of what I have um, but anyway this is just a brilliant cardigan I've talked about it a lot even in my week in outfits videos it is so comfortable it's not scratchy at all despite being 100% wool and I love how easy and carefree it is. I think the reason why I've been wearing this one so much more than the Uniqlo one which featured in my last um, most worn video is because this is more of an oversized fit so it's a bit slouchier and I can wear it over other knitwear pieces if I'm especially cold which is something that I have been doing. I actually really like the way this looks over a black cashmere sweater so that's a look that I've been going for quite frequently. My only word of caution if you are thinking about getting this is making sure that you have a really good wool or cashmere comb because it does pill up quite frequently. This is just one of those things that you have to deal with with natural fiber woolen items uh, but a little bit of maintenance just really extends the life of it, freshens it up, makes it look like new again. So that was my number one most worn piece for the entire season. Then the second piece of knitwear that I wore loads was another item. Actually Quite a few of these items are things that I wore in my 30 day capsule. I think it's just more because they're some of my favorite things to wear. Uh, but the second piece of knitwear is this alpaca knitted sweater from Everlane. This is probably one of my favorite knits in my wardrobe, aside from my Joseph one, which I absolutely adore. I reach for this so frequently. I really love the color. This shade is almond and it's a really nice kind of cool toned oatmeal kind of color. I just think it's really flattering. I love how soft and cozy it is. These wash really well, it has nice blues on style sleeves. You'll see in the cutaway how this fits on me, but it's just a really nice sort of a slouchy fit and it feels pretty carefree for me, which is something that's been really important, especially with a now six month old baby. So, you know, I have to be kind of conscious about everything that I wear. It needs to be relatively easy to look after and care for. So yeah, that has been the other piece of knitwear that I wore loads. Then the jeans that I wore the most throughout winter were the ones that I wore the most in autumn. And again, these were also part of my 30 day capsule. They are my made well skinny jeans. And these have the slightly distressed detailing down at the hem. Uh, these have a 10 inch rise, which I would love if they were maybe an inch or half an inch higher, uh, just because I do have a long torso, but um, yeah, they are brilliant. I feel so comfortable when I wear these. They're quite sort of a thick denim, but they have a decent amount of give to them. And I will say, I do think that Madewell sizing runs a little bit on the large size. So I got these and I was wearing them just after I had a baby and I got a size 25 and I would say they fit like a 26. They fit me really great still, despite I would say I'm probably closer to a 25 than a 26 at the moment. Um, but yeah, just perfect. Love these jeans so much. And one that I'm going to continue wearing loads throughout spring as well. Then the final clothing piece, again, part of my 30 day capsule. <laughs> Which coincidentally, I was wearing all of these items before and after that capsule. So I just want to highlight that. But 
it is interesting to me that they ended up being the ones that I not only gravitated towards the most throughout that capsule but also when I wasn't um, doing capsule wardrobe as well. Uh, this is a utility jacket. It is from Workshop, which is a New Zealand brand. I bought this, I bought this a year after Luke and I got married. So I think I've had it for three years now. It's a unisex jacket. So I believe I got the extra small and it's a really nice oversized fit. It isn't too heavy. It's kind of a cotton canvas. So it's a durable sort of a fabric on the exterior and then it just has a simple cotton lining, uh, but it, it just adds enough weight to my outfits. Um, one thing I really realized this winter, particularly because I was out a lot during the day, as opposed to last year when I worked from home and I was literally inside all the time, uh, is that I didn't really need coats and just a good heavyweight or medium weight jacket was really what sufficed for me uh, because our winter was particularly mild. Um, I'm not sure if that's just Sydney um, or if that's what it's like every year and I only really picked up on it this year but um, I found that coats were something I wanted to wear with maybe three weeks of the season and first thing in the morning when it was ultra cold but it just really warmed up by the middle of the day. Uh, yeah so I feel like that's probably a gap in my wardrobe that maybe I might like to look at growing for 2021 um, but yeah I mean if you live in the northern hemisphere and you are heading towards autumn or fall as you might call it then a great ut utility jacket. I mean, this is such a good neutral, goes with absolutely everything. I will link some options down in the description box below because I checked the workshop website and they don't seem to be selling this one anymore, very sadly. But there are tons of brands that do similar ones and I found a near identical one as well, uh, which was, I think, actually cheaper than this one, even though it was more of a designer piece. Then I want to talk about the shoes that I wore the most. Let me just grab them. And I think this is going to come across as a bit of a funny one because they are sandals. They're actually slides. Um, but when I was looking at, at all the shoes that I wore the most, these were the ones I reached for. And they are from Nisolo. They are the, I think these are called the Isla slides. They were recently on sale. I'm so sorry the sales now ended. Um, I got these in a size US 9.5 and, and I have had questions about how I've managed to buy these. I use mail forwarding, so um, I wouldn't say that it's worth it for everyone. <laughs> I think if you really, really want to purchase from a brand or really try a brand out and you're okay with not being able to return something or you're happy to take that risk, then go for it. The service I use is called Ship It To and I actually pay an additional fee so that I can receive unlimited packages at once so I can consolidate them into one larger parcel and then send it on to Australia. Um, and that's just something that works for me, uh, but if you are wanting to purchase from some of these American brands and you live in Australia or in another country then just look into the fees, the costs involved and also other services because there, there are many. Ship It To is just a service that I've been using since I was 18 when I lived in New Zealand so yeah it's just out, out of habit. Um, but yeah I sized up because I wasn't really sure on sizing and I feel like with open shoes like this you do have a little bit of extra leeway. I'm glad I did because the length is perfect on me. I'm a European 40 or a US 9 in most other brands. I wear a US 9.5 in and Everlane and shoes. Um, yeah and they're just a really good fit. They are definitely designed for people who have got narrow feet. The leather which is sort of a nubuck suede it doesn't really have a lot of give across the foot and that's probably my biggest complaint though i haven't gotten blisters from these uh, but yeah they're just a shoe i slip on i wear them in the house every single day i've worn them out and about they're just a very easy shoe to wear i love the caramel color goes with absolutely everything being such a nice neutral shade so yeah those were my most worn shoes very surprisingly you have to think of the lighting, it's sort of quite cloudy and I'm hoping that none of the video is going to be too overexposed. I'm trying to use a diffuser. <laughs> but um, the bag that I used the most um, actually was a tie between this one and my Kiana tote. Well, I used the Kiana tote just slightly less, but it's my Celine Trio. And I have had people ask me what it was that made me decide to buy a Trio again because I talked about how I sold my previous ones uh, in a video, designer bags I sold and why. I will link it up here. Um, and I had a really bad experience with one that I purchased full price. This one I bought for an absolute steal, pre-loved. It has scratches on the front. It's in goat leather, so it's a lot more hard wearing than the calf leather one that I had. And I just haven't really felt too precious with it. 
I haven't noticed actually any um, deterioration or anything like that. I haven't noticed that the stitching is coming undone on the pockets. So I will definitely be keeping that in mind. But considering I got it for such a good price, I would not find issue with having to pay a leather repairer to fix it if there were any, um, you know, if there was any damage as a result of wear and tear. So that's I suppose that was sort of my justification. Uh, I really love the color too. Um, one of my complaints about my previous one, which was the most beautiful cerulean or periwinkle blue, was that it just was maybe a little bit too bold for me and also my lifestyle didn't really match the bag. Now I find this is a great option. I love the pockets. That was something I loved about the previous one I had as well, but the light gray, very versatile sort of a color goes with my wardrobe really well. So very easy for me to wear. So yeah, that was my most worn bag. Then I just want to do a very quick shout out to two accessories that I wore loads this month. The first one being a pair of sunglasses. These ones are from Portrait. These are the Metro sunglasses in the Murano tortoiseshell print. I'll put them on so you can see. So this is what they look like on. I have been reaching for them every single day because it's been so sunny. I need to wear sunglasses when I'm going out for my daily walks, when I'm at the park. Uh, yeah, they've just been fantastic. Absolutely love the way that they look. And yeah, they're very, very classic sort of a silhouette and frame and one that I think would suit most face shapes as well. So yeah, definitely one that I see myself wearing a lot throughout spring as well. And then also wanted to highlight my earrings too. So. You probably aren't even going to be able to see them from this far away, so we'll do a close-up. But these are some diamond studs, uh, gold diamond studs from Brand Oro. Um, I've been wearing these loads just because I'm paranoid about my uh, piercings closing up because I can't wear any dangly drop earrings day to day as they would just get tugged at. So these are a really great option for me. I can wear them in the shower. They're just very practical, fuss free. I don't even need to think about it. So that's what I love about them. They're very dainty as well. So you barely even can see them. I had sort of thought that maybe I would wear them with a second piercing, but because of COVID, I actually haven't gone to go and get any piercings or anything. I just don't feel like it's the time. So maybe 2021 or 2022 will be the year that I get a second piercing my earlobe. But yeah, they've just been fantastic as well. So those are my most worn items for the winter season. Almost feels like I should be saying autumn season because of how transitional these items have been. <laughs> really, really, um, I guess, surprised me that I've been going for more lighter options uh, because it has been so warm here. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know if there were any surprises. I mean, probably would have expected to see my Vanelli two-tone pumps, which I did wear loads, but just the slides were what I've been reaching for the most coincidentally um yeah but let me know if there were any surprises and yeah what your most worn items were of the season just being thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time with a brand new video see you soon bye